Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. President Buhari reaffirms his administration's commitment to infrastructure development across the country as he inaugurates the new Port Harcourt International Airport Terminal. Federal government orders the dismantling of all illegal security outfits in the country, bans unauthorized use of unmanned aerial vehicles. How best to maximize Africa's resources for the development of the continent dominates discussions at the Tony Lumalu Foundation Entrepreneurship Forum in Lagos. And ten people were killed in Cameroon and Griffin region in renewed fighting between government troops and rebel forces. And it's more information for you on channelcv.com. You can also check out our youtube.com forward slash channels web where you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature. You can use that to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and please follow the instructions. And now let's look at some of the images that you sent in, beginning with this good news from Lufemi Oju at Uluora in Lagos State, showing this transformer, which an eyewitness says has just been delivered by a co-electricity distribution company. He says this is coming months after the faulty transformer was taken away. He appreciates Channel's Television Eyewitness Forum for calling attention to the plight of residents. And next is this video from a better bus stop in Alimosho, local government area of Lagos State, showing the bad state of the road. According to our eyewitness reporter, the poor state has caused much damage to vehicles that many motorists now prefer to travel in public transport. He wants the Lagos State government to look into it. A final image is from Old Ojo Road in Lagos State, showing a dilapidated wooden bridge. This there appears to be the only means of getting across the pool by residents, according to our eyewitness reporter. She wants the Amu Wadofin local government area of the state government to come to their aid. We thank you for sending in those images and ask that you keep them coming. The trial of Nigerian pastor and leader of the Jesus Dominion International Church, Timothy Amotosho, continued today at the Port Elizabeth High Court in South Africa. Mr. Motosho, along with two female South Africans, are facing multiple charges of human trafficking, racketeering, and the contravention of South Africa's Sexual Offences Act. Our South African Bureau Chief, Betty Debia, reports. Ahead of the court session today, which began at 2 p.m. local time, supporters of both sides manned respective positions outside, while the police maintained a buffer zone. The case didn't proceed as normal at the Port Elizabeth High Court today as the defense brought to court two applications. One, leave to appeal the dismissal of the earlier application for Judge Mandela Makala to recuse himself from the case over alleged bias and an application to throw out the entire case and have all the charges dropped. With what the utterance, they have reasonably apprehended that I am biased and shall not be able to bring an impartial mind to bear in adjudication of this matter. They have dismally failed to do that. These are my reasons. Remaining on the charge sheet, my lord, uh, that alone, I think, we need to have the view of the highest court, my lord. We need to hear what the Supreme Court of Appeal might say. Because, my lord, there's so many things the Supreme Court of Appeal could say. Your matter has postponed until uh, Tuesday, the 30th of uh, October 2018, at Pasadena. To break down the legal process, we sought explanations on the implication of this development. If he does refuse the application, they can approach the Supreme Court of Appeal in the way of a petition to have another bite at the cherry, to say, we want to petition the Supreme Court of Appeal for leave to appeal being dismissed. And the Supreme Court of Appeal thereafter makes a decision. If they allow the application, then they have the appeal. That appeal will probably be held in Grahamstown in front of two or more judges. If they dismiss that application, it comes back to Judge Makula and the trial continues. While the legal tension came to a head in court, same played out outside as supporters for both sides literally crossed the line. 
I think that the advocate that they sent to the they say is Terry Prince. He has brought the dignity of this court. I must respect that and must also appreciate. The way he was articulating his views to the judge, you know, and the way he was treating also the prosecutor, I'm satisfied. Accused number one, Pastor Timothy Omar Chosha, remains in custody, while accused number two and three remain on bail. From the Port Elizabeth High Court in the Eastern Cape Province, South Africa, Betsy Divia, Channel Star. Well, let's go over to our Abuja studios where Gloria Mezuke is standing by with more stories. Hello, Gloria. Thank you, Millicent. A Makadi Chief Magistrate Court has remanded a lecturer in the Benue State Polytechnic, Mr. Andrew Obuja, in prison custody till November the 29th. The lecturer has been accused of raping Ms. Ochaya Ogbanji, a 13-year-old who died on October the 17th owing to VVF complications. Mr. Obuja's remand was ordered by Chief Magistrate Isaac Ajim, who declined jurisdiction to entertain the charges of criminal conspiracy and culpable homicide preferred against the accused by the Nigerian police. Meanwhile, the Ogbanji family and the National Council of Women's Society wants justice for the victim. Coming from a family member, somebody who is trusted, a relation, it demands more level of accountability. It demands more level of seriousness, and that is why it should be taken seriously. There are so many Ochanias out there who are going through similar issues. And if this matter is not dealt with decisively, it won't help the society to grow. The accused has been arranged, the court has made orders for his remand, and has also declined jurisdiction in the matter, which means the accused did not even take his plea, and the matter has been adjourned to the 29th of November for further mention. Meanwhile, triggered by the recent death of a minor in Benue State who allegedly died of complications from multiple sexual abuse, a coalition of rights activists is calling on the government to put in place stiffer penalties for rapists and child molesters. The protesters marched the Office of the Minister of Justice in Abuja, asking that justice be done for all victims of rape and child abuse. In Nigeria, rape is a criminal offence that attracts life jail sentence. Rights activists converge on the, on the unity fountain. fountain in Abuja, dressed in black to mourn all victims of rape and sexual abuse in Nigeria. The bold inscriptions on their t-shirts says it all. They want stiffer penalty for rapists. We must become a people who care for our own. The event is triggered by the recent death of a minor in Benue State, Miss Ochenya Elizabeth, who allegedly died of complications from multiple sexual abuse. We must demand accountability of our government and justice for Ochaya and every child that has become a victim of sexual violence in Nigeria. The legislature at state and federal level need to work on the law. Work on the law to impose life sentence without any variation on whoever is culpable caught doing this. Life imprisonment is the maximum sentence for rape in Nigeria, while sex with a minor attracts a maximum of 25 years imprisonment. Activists here argue strongly that the existence of such laws are not enough to prevent this form of criminality. The major thing is not really the law. It's the values we hold as a people. It's what we tolerate as a people. It's what we do to the poor, the vulnerable, and women. So it's a holistic approach that will bring a stop or reduction to a minimum of this inhuman thing called rape. The protesters, including children, also marched to the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Here, the director of litigation assures the protesters that no case of rape or sexual abuse will be swept under the carpet once it is investigated by the police. I want to assure you of one thing. If this incident took place in any state, let it be investigated, let the report be made to the commissioner of police of the state. 
I assure you on behalf of the Attorney General, once the report gets to the Minister of Justice, the battle will be prosecuted to a logical conclusion. There are no reliable local data on rape cases and child sexual abuses in Nigeria. However, the United Nations report for 2015 reveals that one in four girls and one in ten boys in Nigeria have experienced sexual violence before the age of 18. If these statistics is anything to go by, the situation is no doubt a serious one that requires urgent attention. Well, let's examine this issue further, and I'm now joined by a co-convener of today's march against sexual assault and the executive director and advocacy group, Make a Difference Initiative, Mr. Lemuel Gigbe. You're welcome to the News of 10. Thank you very much. Now, you're calling for stiffer penalties for perpetrators of sexual abuse, and uh, we're wondering, there are provisions in the law already prescribing penalties like life imprisonment. Is the problem about how stringent the penalty is, or what exactly? Okay, I think the problem here is um, the weight we place on issues of sexual violations of minors. Because we, the law is there stated as life sentence, but the judges seem to have a right of discretion, to exercise discretion. And that's the reason you see that even though the law says life sentence, we have situations in recent times for instance, the man who impregnated the daughter, a minor, mm -hmm. in Edo State recently, was sentenced to 14 years imprisonment as against what the law provides for, which is a, a life sentence. Now, in law, the 14 years will become like seven calendar years. So that's a slap on the wrist. So I think that it's the premium we place on the issue. We must all see it as a very serious menace because the tide is swelling increasingly. Almost every child is a potential victim. And unless we take it seriously through advocacy and getting the judiciary mm. to know how really bad the situation is. Because like you can see today, based on the uh, grand swell of advocacy, even before today's rally, that's the reason the magistrate in Benue State decided that even though he's declining jurisdiction, he still took a decision. Ordinarily, without this amount of activism on our China, the, my, the lawyers will argue that once a judge has no discretion, all he can do is to seize, okay, to wash his hands of the case. But this magistrate took the initiative based on the groundswell of public opinion because they are also not insulated from but, it. But you see, uh, uh, cases like yeah. sexual abuse are yes. usually difficult to prove in the court yes. much of the time. Yes. Is that why we have a lot of these cases occurring or because the social media brings it to limelight? Uh, it's, it occur why it's occurring? It's occurring because there are, I look at it from two or three points of view, why this occurs. It occurs, one, because there's an increasing concern about mental health challenge, one, okay? Uh, Nigerians are suffering all sorts of mental health challenges now, and it's increasing. It's manifesting in the numbers of people who commit suicide these days, mm -hmm. okay? That's one. Two, it's also occurring because of some who have occultic or mystical needs, and they think defiling little girls will give them some powers. Thirdly, it's occurring because we have not shown strong political will to deal decisively with one case, use as an example, and make sure that person is sentenced to life and he serves his life sentence. If that happens, there will be a deterrent. So the lack of deterrent is the third reason it's occurring. But thank God that there is social media because the, uh, the traditional media, of course, is more concerned about, with due respect, about uh, political matters. Social media is the reason of China's case has come up. And the truth of the matter is that there are so many of China's out there. And we all need both the traditional media and the new media to work together to bring this to an end. 
Well, we could talk about this on and on, but we must thank you very much for your time thank on you. the News at 10, Mr. Lemmy Ogigbe. And uh, when the News at 10 returns, Brewery's giant Guinness Nigeria reports strong net sales in 2018 in spite of challenging operating environment. That's some business news. Just join us again.